So another question we have from our comments section, this person has Gleason uh, 8 and 9 prostate cancer in the prostate, and it seems to be localized on the PSMA scan. There's no medic metastatic activity. The radiation oncologist wants to go ahead and do radiation to the seminal vesicles and lymph nodes in the surrounding area just to be safe. And the patient was kind of wondering if he could just get away with only treating the tumors, not going to those particular areas since the scan was clear. Is this possible and does he need to go with the safety recommendation from the radiation oncologist? What do you suggest? That's a good question. And it's coming up now uh, that we have these PSMA PET scans. The studies have shown in high-risk patients that when the PSMA PET scan is not showing any metastatic disease, that it's accurate about 80% of the time. And in the intermediate risk patients, we call them teal, high risk we call it azure. Uh, in the teal patients, uh, if you have a PSMA PET scan that shows no metastatic activity, that it's accurate and correct about 90% of the time. So what's going on in the 10%? Well, there's some little speck of cancer that's too small outside the gland that hasn't been picked up on the PSMA PET scan. How do we use that information? Well, uh, if you want to radiate the lymph nodes prophylactically on the possibility that there's some microscopic disease in the lymph nodes, you, in a high-risk patient where there's a 20% chance that there's something there, you'll probably eliminate the metastatic disease about half the time. So half of 20% is 10%. So the people that decide to have pelvic radiation who are high-risk can uh, in improve their cure rate from 80% to 90% by treating the pelvic lymph nodes. And since pelvic lymph node radiation has become much safer, it's much it's very unlikely to cause any uh, serious repercussions, sounds like a reasonable trade-off. Why and where would we argue against pelvic uh, lymph node radiation? Well, if you had someone who was very elderly, uh, you could argue that uh, maybe it's not necessary. You could just do PSMA PET scans going forward, and, and if a uh, lymph node problem shows up later, you could just treat it uh, at that juncture, probably with good results. The statistics uh, that we're providing, I think, give a context for why someone would want to do pelvic uh, lymph node radiation and how much benefit there would be from getting pelvic lymph node radiation. And uh, if it is done at a center of excellence where it can be administered skillfully, uh, the chances of being harmed by the pelvic lymph node radiation are pretty small. So we have a patient with Gleason 9 prostate cancer. They got a PSMA scan and it did show metastatic activity. There was a couple spots on the pelvic bone and in the lymph nodes, and they want to do um, some treatments obviously for it, but they need to know what to do now. And so what are your suggestions? Well, assuming this isn't someone that's 90 years old, the approach in, once the cancer spreads is to be as aggressive as possible. The defining issue in all cancers, including prostate cancer, is whether or not it's going to spread. Uh, cancers that don't spread outside the prostate, one could almost argue are harmless. They're not, they're not gonna hurt the prostate and they're not gonna hurt you. The ones that do spread, then it becomes a matter of degree, but it's, it's always potentially serious. Even a single lymph node uh, documented to be metastatic is a serious development. More, the, the more spots and the more locations, it becomes even more serious. Hopefully, this individual uh, has a limited number of lymph nodes in the pelvis and a limited number of spots on the bone, uh, in the pelvic bone, uh, because if that's the case, then it is quite reasonable to radiate all those spots, the prostate, the lymph node, and the bones, uh, to try and eliminate all known disease. In addition, of course, we suspect there may be other microscopic specks in other parts of the body that aren't being detected. And uh, the usual format is to go on combination hormone therapy for 18 months uh, with a first and second generation hormonal agent, such as Lupron plus Extandi or Zytiga or Nubeca or Lita. And uh, if they're not excessively old to consider a short course of uh, chemotherapy with Taxotere, maybe four to six injections over a 12 to 16 week period. So this is all done sequentially and uh, uh, we don't need, need to go into all those details. But I think on the checklist, someone in this situation says, should be, am I getting combination hormone therapy? Am I getting radiation to all sites of disease? Am I getting a short course of chemotherapy? Uh, to optimize uh, my long-term survival and, and in rare cases, even cure rates. Uh, people with uh, early metastatic disease sometimes are cured 
Uh, but we certainly want to get them into a complete remission, which is usually quite achievable, and uh, then hopefully a long holiday period before further treatment might be needed down the line. So our next question is, cachexia common with chemotherapy? So cachexia means uh, weight loss, um, you know, weakness. It's a progressive um, condition that uh, pe people who are imminently dying of advanced cancer often face uh, cachexia. The answer is no. Uh, chemotherapy, um, especially the types that we use for prostate cancer, which are far milder than the kinds of chemotherapy that are used for other more serious cancers like lung cancer, pancreas cancer. The side effects tend to be um, uh, quite manageable. Uh, people will have some transient uh, fatigue and tiredness for two or three, five days after each injection of the, the taxotere. Uh, some hair loss, occasionally some other issues with numbness in the fingers and toes. But cachexia is really uh, the last uh, concern uh, from chemotherapy. That's uh, not on my radar as a concern. Thanks so much for watching. If you would like more information about prostate cancer and all sorts of education, you can visit our website, pcri.org, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new prostate cancer education videos every week.